prayer is putting oneself in the hands of God at his disposition and listening to his voice in the depth of our hearts. May I now invite Dr. Violet Diabrin, Dean of Sciences, Head Department of Biotechnology and Bioinformatics to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for enabling us to conduct the two-day international conference on environmental humanities, relocating the territories of nature successfully. Thank you, Father, for all the resource persons and all the support. Especially, we thank Dr. Andrews, Oxford, United Kingdom, Dr. Nirmal Silverad, Dr. Dr. Orin, environmental activist from the University of Michigan, USA, Dr. Theodore Boskrin, writer, and a special guest for the valedictory address, Dr. Arnachalam from Cochin University, Kerala. Thank you, Lord, for all the deliberation and useful conclusions that we have derived from the two-day international conference. Thank you, Father, for making this event more productive and memorable for all the participants who have participated in all sessions. Help them, O oh Lord, to bear fruits in their life and achieve the objectives of the conference. O oh Lord, we come to thy throne of grace and your presence to thank you for all the good works, especially for the generous support of the management, the meticulous efforts of the conveners, organizing secretaries, organizing committee members, as well as the support rendered by all technical and non-technical people. Thank you, Father, for, for bringing us together at the end of this two-day international conference. At this juncture, we beseech your presence for your guidance and wisdom to achieve the purpose of the conference. Lord, we look to you for your grace and kindness to execute the plans with suitable strategies and approaches to bring glory to thy great name. Thank you, Father, for the wonderful time that we had through this conference and as well as to think and share our expertise for the benefit of the society. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Lord, we submit the entire program unto their hands. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you, ma'am, for invoking the God's blessings. Small cheer and great welcome makes a merry feast. Now I invite Dr. G. Nyanraj, Associate Professor and Ed, Department of Commerce and Bursar of our college to welcome the gathering. Very learned and respected uh, chief guest for the valediction, the convener of the conference, the organizing secretary, other learned professors, and uh, participants and delegates. On behalf of Bishop Weber College, I'd like to extend to you all a very warm welcome to the valediction of the two-day international interdisciplinary conference on environmental humanities, relocating the territories of nature. Today, as we conclude one of the biggest conferences on conservation of environment and nature, we become part of the global efforts in eco-restoration, an essential and contemporary issue facing the world today. With over 100 delegates participating from around the world, this conference has initiated several conversations on the issues in environmental consciousness. The papers presented and the discussions that followed have enriched the debate, dialogue, as well as have strengthened our resolve to leave a better environment for the future generation. As a fitting finale to the conference and all the deliberations and discussions we have with us, a very eminent scholar to give a lecture on natural resources and economic development, Dr. P. Arnachalam. Sir, on behalf of all of us gathered here, on behalf of Bishop Biba College, I'd like to extend to you a very warm welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. I'd also like to welcome the convener for the conference, Dr. Shobana uh, you'd like to thank her and welcome her for all the efforts that she has put in. 
and i like to welcome the organizing secretary organizing secretary will thank everyone so i thought i will take a minute to thank the organizing secretary for all the efforts she has put in in fact i was fortunate enough to work with her along uh, work along with her as uh, the for a year and i found her to be a a person who means business uh, a person with whom i thought i should learn a lot of things a very soft spoken demure person but in spite of all that a very assertive person uh, i talk too much i communicate little but i have seen her talk too little and communicate very effectively and i can understand the efforts that she has put in to make this conference a reality so i take this opportunity to specially thank the organizing secretary for all her efforts and like to welcome her thank you very much i'd also like to welcome our vice principal here dr alapa moses who is joining us online thank you moses for joining you have been a pioneer in this area of uh, research and uh, thank you very much for all your inputs we have other members of the faculty here on behalf of all of us i mean on behalf of the organizing committee i'd like to extend to all of you a very warm welcome and as there's a person waiting to introduce uh, dr arnachalam i'm not saying much words about him but i know that he is a very a uh, learned and scholarly person a person of eminence thank you very much once again for joining us sir we look forward to listening to you thank you sir and welcome sir. thank you thank you sir for your warm words of welcome success seems to be connected with action successful people keep moving if you love what you are doing you will be successful may i request dr florence shalini assistant professor of social work to present the report of the conference Good afternoon one and all the international interdisciplinary conference on environmental humanities relocating the territories of nature has concluded its work successfully this time in virtual mode organized by the deanery of humanities bishop ibba college india the conference served as a forum to bring together academicians researchers practitioners and industry professionals and facilitated discussions in innovative ideas covering diverse topics pertaining to environmental issues in a bid to relocate the environment's lost terrains by retracing our steps to reconnect with the primordial nature and thereby restructure our ideological praxis thus serving the agenda of the conference the conference called for a rethinking on the political socio cultural and scientific manifestos that stifle nature in order to realign the priorities of man and to revive a symbiotic relationship with nature conference scope in the two day interdisciplinary conference on environmental humanities in relocating the territories of nature more than 34 topics were deliberated upon but not limited to the following research and development areas and fields environmental management environmental philosophy and imagination folk literature and environmental philosophy environmental justice green economy environmental marketing social ecology environmental management and sustainable development as a result five keynote addresses and 10 technical sessions had been held in accordance with the conference scope and the strength opportunities and challenges in relocating the territories of nature were deliberated upon opening ceremony inauguration the first day of the conference the 6th of july started with the welcoming and opening ceremony the following representatives of the organizing team and invited special speakers of international repute addressed the august gathering right reverend dr d chandrashekar nayya bishop of CSI Trichy Tanju Dices Chairman and Secretary Bishop Iba College Dr D Paul Deabran Principal Bishop Iba College Dr Andrew Speedy Emeritus Student Fellow of Christ Church Oxford UK Dr Nirmal Selvamani Writer and Eco Critic and Dr S Shobhanadeen of Arts Keynote speeches Special address one on green systems, a holistic approach was delivered by Dr. Andrew Speedy, Emeritus Student Fellow of Christ Church, Oxford, UK. The special address one was devoted to the stated problem from the point of view of practical experience and research. A theoretical insight to green systems with its practical implications was discussed. The systems approach with the whole earth approach perspective enabled the audience to understand the importance of a balanced interaction between the varied systems. So. social economic and political to offer solution to the environmental issues plaguing us the following areas were covered acknowledging the interconnectedness of day to day issues as they affect the environment as an 
any development process, tackling or addressing such issues which demands an integrated approach and the solutions to the issues or problems. It being a pressing need, emphasis was laid on for it to be addressed on a priority basis, duly considered as an emergency. Special address two on Tinai studies is the new avatar of the humanities was rendered by Dr. Nirmal Selvamani, writer and eco-critic. Special address two was centered around the neo Tinai poetics, the eco-critical theory based on the Tinai theory of classical Tamil literature. The expert speaker dwelled deep on various aspects of it, humanities not having a practical arm, culture not being nature, ecologization of humanities being problematic, critics of human and redefinition of human attempting to reconstruct Tinai theory and practice as an alternative social order. He emphasized that there is an integrated relationship in this world that scare the humans, nature and culture intertwined to one another. He laid stress on the need to revamp our education system and think along the lines of Tinai. Special address three on environmental stewardship was delivered by Dr. Orin Gendalus, environmental activist, professor of biology and environmental studies, University of Michigan, Dearborn, USA. Special address three, through light on the importance of responsible use and protection of the natural environment through conservation and sustainable practices by being, by being aware and knowledgeable of the world around us and making sure we do as little as possible to negatively impact the world. He called for a cultural and spiritual transformation and a relocation of traditional problem solving practices of ours. Special address four and on language and ecology was rendered by Dr. Theoda Baskaran, writer, historian, and wildlife conservationist. Special address four enabled the August gathering to gain insights on how in all ancient civilizations, the names of birds and animals tell us something about their characteristics. He laid bare the reasons as to why conservation has not become a people's movement in India, since it has not been taken to the people in the language that they can understand or relate with. He insisted that for ecological issues to be redressed, language needs to become a part of the agenda and that language needs to be empowered to discuss issues of social and environmental concern as traditional ecological wisdom comes from a mother tongue. Valedictory address, a special address five on natural resources and economic development is to be delivered by uh, Dr. P. Arunachalam, Head Department of Economics, Cochin University, Cochin, Kerala. We are about to listen to this need of the hour lecture in a short while from now. Concurrent technical sessions, hundreds of attendees, paper presenters, keynote and technical session participants, research scholars and students have benefited in many ways from this conference. More than 90 scientific papers were presented by authors from around 10 and more states of India. In technical sessions uh, that were held yesterday and today, 6th and 7th of July 2021. All accepted papers had been categorized into 10 sessions pertaining to the varied disciplines, environmental sciences, English, French, Hindi, Sanskrit literatures, Tamil literature, history, economics, commerce, social work, and business administration. And the topics deliberated were as follows, just to name a few, environmental impact assessment, ecological restoration, environmental ethics, environmental aesthetics, environmental theology, environmental equity, reproductive justice, environmental health, implications of social work intervention, eco-justice, and disaster management. The closing ceremony of the International Interdisciplinary Conference on Environmental Humanities Relocating the Territories of Nature is being held now. We have amidst us the following guests, Dr. G. Nyanraj, Bursar and Head Department of Commerce, Prof. Alagappa Moses, Vice Principal Aid at Bishop College, Dr. P. Arunachalam, Head Department of Economics, Cochin University, Cochin, Kerala, and Dr. K. Shanti, Associate Dean of Arts. We, the organizing committee, is sure that you all would agree with this, that the past two days has been an enriching, fruitful, enduring, and enduring experience for all of us, and that we were able to make the most from the sessions we attended. Through a wide range of special addresses and discussions, we have been presented with new theoretical perspectives, novel best practices, replicable intervention strategies, which would enable us to deal with some of the challenges we might encounter in our endeavor to relocate the territories of nature. We hope that the two-day deliberations facilitated all of us to share a rich experience and expertise with other participants from near and far. And thanks to technology that we could still manage to build a cordial relationship amongst us. Though in-person meeting could have made it a lot more cherishable. Nevertheless, we made it in spite of the limitations. Kudos to all of us. 
The organizing team is very sure that the real measure of this conference success lies in how it will affect us all, or more precisely, how it will affect the actions we will take post the curtains coming down on this conference. We look forward to further building partnerships with you and your organizations. We, the organizers, do hope that all of us will continue what we have started here these two days and addressing pressing environmental concerns effectively. Uh, thanks, one and all. Thank you, ma'am, for this elaborate report. Look deep into the nature and then you will understand everything better. Live in each season as it passes. Breathe the hair, drink the drink, taste the fruit, and resign yourself to the influence that of the earth. May I now invite Professor Alagapa Moses, Vice Principal of Aided Section and Head Department of Environmental Sciences, to offer felicitation. Very good afternoon to uh, one and all. Um, let me have the privilege of uh, thanking um, the organizing committee, the Dean of Arts, uh, Dr. Shobana, for the initiative taken in terms of organizing this wonderful event, the environmental humanities relocating the territories of nature. My appreciation to the organizing uh, secretary and all the members of the organizing committee, as well the conveners and co-conveners for uh, thoughtfully uh, planning this wonderful uh, international virtual conference. And uh, as uh, have been presented by uh, Dr. Shalini, that uh, we have uh, you know, almost uh, 32 areas have been focused. And uh, there were many uh, contributions. The authors have contributed uh, their own uh, you know, like research in terms of various environmental uh, aspects. And which is one of the great uh, uh, you know, like gesture of uh, protecting uh, the environment. And, uh, one of the things as uh, we have just, you know, like uh, listening to uh, right from the Gaia hypothesis by Dr. Andrew Speedy to the environmental stewardship and then the language and ecology by Dr. Uh, Theodore Basran and uh, all the other authors, Dr. Nirmal Selvamani, that uh, there is a lot of uh, emphasis is being thrown on uh, the conservation of the environment and uh, various things that are immediate, uh, you know, like we are in contact with our immediate environment and uh, with which like we need to be uh, concerned and then we need to protect the nature. So uh, uh, it is one of the great event uh, in the history of Bishop Kiba College that the Department of English and the Dean of Academies have taken the initiative to organize this international virtual conference on uh, this particular theme. And uh, the Church of South India Synod also uh, conducted a similar international conference in 2019 wherein almost all these kind of themes have been uh, focused. So I appreciate and uh, I offer my congratulations and greetings to everyone of those who have, uh, you know, like wonderfully contributed to this uh, in terms of their scientific uh, papers. And one of the things as I request the organizing committee and then the contributors to look into uh, addressing more on the sustainable uh, development goals. And uh, as both the Department of Environmental Sciences, Bishop Kiba College, and uh, the Department of Commerce have taken the initiative of addressing all the SDGs, 17 goals. So therefore, these 17 goals are very vital and this helps each and every institution, academic institution, to throw more light in terms of uh, documenting all the uh, SDGs and its progress and its contribution by the institution, which will certainly help in the accreditation process. And also, uh, uh, this is uh, one of the events that marks the uh, a decade of ecosystem restoration, which have been earmarked by the United Nations Environment Program as a theme for the decade, and also the theme for this World Environment Day 2021 as the ecosystem restoration. So when we think of this ecosystem restoration, you know, like almost all this, uh, you know, like the different multidisciplinary, uh, you know, like involvement is quite required while you try to restore the ecosystem, maybe an aquatic or a terrestrial ecosystem of any kind. So without the uh, kind of an interdisciplinary approach, we may not be able to achieve, uh, you know, any of this in a very, very fruitful manner. Therefore, uh, let this not be an end and let this be a beginning. And I would appeal to all the contributors and then the organizing committee to follow it up and then see that this, this ecosystem restoration and then all the goals in the sustainable, uh, in the SDGs are taken up well and then addressed. And then uh, that will, you know, like make uh, every one of us feel proud that we have contributed a bit in terms of protecting the uh, environment and then towards meeting the sustainable development goals. 
So with these few words, uh, let me thank uh, the organizers for the opportunity given. And also I wish the deliberations and especially the, the, the keynote valedictory address by Dr. Anachalam will be of uh, great help to us. And I'm sure that this economics is one of the important field that which is very much required. And you know, quite often in the environmental sciences, we used to talk more about the tragedy of the common and which the Garrett Hardin's theory is being uh, well taken up. And there are a lot of economic instruments that uh, is being uh, implemented in the Ministry of Environmental Affairs and Climate Change to address all these environmental issues. I'm sure that the, uh, the valid creators will be of uh, a great, uh, uh, you know, like new insight that will be, uh, you know, like exposed to. And uh, I thank Dr. Nachiram for accepting the invitation. And also I thank Dr. Shobana and Dr. Shanti Clements for uh, all the efforts in conducting this program. Thank you very much and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We will definitely do our bit to restore our Mother Earth. Excellence is not being the best. It is doing your best. Now, I invite Dr. S. Sita Lakshmi, Associate Professor and Ed, Department of Economics, to introduce the Chief Guest of this day. Respected Principal, Respected Vice Principal, Respected Chief Guest, Respected Bursar, Dean of Sciences, Respected as Associate Dean and Respected Dean of Arts, Professors and Scholars. Good afternoon, everybody. I am immensely happy to introduce Dr. P. Arnachalam, Professor and Head, Cochin University of Science and Technology. He is an academician. He is having uh, 31 years of teaching and research experiences. He took his P uh, PG degree from Loyola College, Madras, MPhil and PhD degree from Cochin University. A central university awarded him doctoral fellowship conducted all India level in the year 1988. He was awarded post doctoral training fellowship uh, uh, in Netherlands. Part of his research training program, he visited France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, Spain, England, Switzerland, Sri Lanka, Singapore, USA, and most of the Gulf countries. He is specialized in quantitative techniques, international economics, and business statistics. He has participated uh, 316 national and international conferences as a keynote speaker, chair, panel member, and uh, discussant. He has published about 160 research articles in national and international journals and edited books. He has written two books and uh, edited 24 books on various issues. He was a member of the Ac Academic Council from 2004 to 2007. He is a visiting faculty member of many universities and colleges in South India. He is a member of several academic and professional bodies at national and international levels. He has produced 17 PhDs and guided 70 MPhil scholars and eight more students are doing PhD under his supervision. Now he is doing a major research work on digital economy of India, privacy and security. He was a member of Academic Audit PhD, Krishnamal uh, Women's College, Koyamathur. He is the uh, guest editor of the journal Indian Development Review, serials publication, New Delhi, and also editor of two international journals. He is a UGC NET panel member from 2000 onwards. He is also a SET uh, panel member. He has done a, a minor project on India spices exports to the Netherlands. Major project on global based commodity chain, Netherlands. He is a member of Reforma Advisory Board, Reforma Business School, Indur, Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh. The Journal of the Asia Pacific Economy, Department of International Business and Asian Studies, uh, Griffith University, Australia, has nominated him as one of the ref uh, referees to make comments on CES, Special Economic Zone Research Work Papers. He is a member of Editorial Advisory Board for the SNS Journal of Finance, SNS College of Technology, Koyambutur. He is a member Board of Studies for uh, uh, MA Co uh, Coastal uh, Resource Economics and Management, Manavaniyam Sundaranar University, Dhinnal Valley, member uh, in uh, Editorial Board, um, Management Review, Bangalore, 
member of a review committee, International Research Journal of Management and Business Studies, Asso Associate Editor of Journal, Spear, Pope College, uh, uh, Saveri Buram. He is a life member of Indian Institute of Public Administration, New Delhi. He is a member as partner in uh, Raj Rajan's Digital Identity Management, London, UK, member and editorial board, Asian Research Consortium, editorial board member of the Journal Outreach, uh, Vivo Chidambaram College, Tutukudi, editorial board member of the Research Journal of uh, SRN MSc, a multidisciplinary bi uh, biannual research uh, journal, Sri Ramasamy Naidu Memorial College, Satur, Asso associate editor in uh, Devaganga Madam, Arts, Madam. Manas. Madam, I mean, uh, prefit, uh, prefit. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, sir. Arpu Kote, uh, he is a, a general counsel as well as executive uh, council member of uh, National University of Advanced Legal Studies. He, uh, he is uh, awards. Uh, he is a board of study member in uh, many of the universities and colleges in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. He is not uh, after awards, but awards are after him. He has received Rajiv Gandhi Gold Medal Award to, in 2015, Radha Krishnan Gold Medal Award in 2015, Outstanding Scientist Award in 2016, Bharat Vidya Ratan Award 2018, Bharat Ratna uh, Indra Gandhi Gold Medal Award in 2018, Bharat Ratna Dr. Abdul Kalam Gold Medal Award in 2018, Lifetime Academic Achievement Award in 2019, Best Citizen of India Gold Medal Award in 2019, International Economic Excellence Award for Best Professor in uh, 2019, Innovative <coughs> Research and Dedicated Excellent Educationist Award in Economics in the year 2020-21. He has evaluated more than 250 PhD theses and conducted PhD five hours examination for 200 candidates in various universities in India. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Sir, it's over to you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, good afternoon, uh, one and all uh, present here for this uh, validity function. Uh, at the outset, let me uh, congratulate and express my sincere thanks to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Dr. Shobana, uh, Dean, Dean of Arts, and uh, all the faculty members uh, in, in the Piece of Paper College for taking this initiative for conducting an excellent program on environmental issues. Uh, now I'm coming to the point. Respected uh, Professor Alagappa Moses, uh, Vice Principal. Uh, respected Dr. C. Annathurai, uh, 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 Jnana, Jnana Raj, Head Department of Commerce. Respected Dr. Siddhalash Madam, HOD, Department of Economics. Respected uh, Dr. E. e Telma, Department of Economics, uh, Dr. K. Uh, Shandi, Assist, Assist Associate uh, Edit uh, Dean of Arts, and uh, uh, faculty members from all the departments uh, in, in Piece of Paper College. And uh, I have seen uh, a senior professor like I mean, Professor Mitraja, and uh, many of the professors from North India also, I mean, uh, very much present. Uh, I would see their faces here. and. Uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm very much thankful to I mean, Santi Madam for, uh, and Siddha Madam for giving this very good opportunity to take part in this program. Uh, uh, I don't know with what intention, I mean, they have invited me for this program, I could not understand it. But generally, uh, in, uh, in economics, we used to, in the first class, in generally, whenever I mean, you go to class first time, uh, it starts with the demand is function of price. Uh, I mean, uh, demand varies. Uh, increases or decreases according to the, uh, I mean, changes in the level of uh, price level. And opposite also we can study. Uh, price is a function of demand. Uh, demand increases or decreases according to the uh, requirements of the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, price level. And uh, so that uh, what one can understand from this, I mean, uh, demand is function of price means uh, there is, there exists an inverse relationship between uh, price and demand. There is, an, there is an inverse relationship. It's not a direct relationship. Both uh, price level and uh, demand will not go together. Uh, always a, a opposite direction. I mean, when price increases, uh, demand decreases. When price decreases, demand increases. It may be exceptional things may be uh, there. But actually, this inverse relationship is there uh, 
I mean, in, in, in demand and supply, in demand and price conditions. If you look into the issues of environmental issues, uh, environmental, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, management and other things with development, uh, similar uh, type of, I mean, uh, I mean, relationship is existing because uh, both, I mean, development as well as environment is not directly related. Both are moving the opposite direction. If you want to have more development, I mean, at the, at the cost of what? At the, at the question will come. At the cost of what? I mean, uh, morning, morning I, I was here, I mean, uh, to attend uh, uh, some own program. And uh, so if you want to protect the forest, if you want to protect the, I mean, uh, uh, ecosystem, if you want to protect the environment, if you want to protect the rivers, if you want to protect the lakes, uh, dams, mountains, the ecosystem, everything. I mean, uh, we, ha we have to limit our development. I mean, that's what generally, I mean, people used to advise and advocate. But uh, uh, but I just, I generally, uh, I mean, I, I used to have uh, my opinion regarding just opposed to that one. I mean, generally, not only here, and most of the, I mean, the forums, uh, I am always, I mean, in support of development. Uh, development, but later on, the, the, once we, uh, we reached a, a final part of development, a scientific development, uh, automatically the development will, I mean, uh, uh, will, will, will will promote, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, redu reduction of, I mean, uh, pollution in industrial sector, in uh, water, irrigation, air, whatever may be. So to that level, we have to come. And uh, just a few factors I, I, I reading before, I mean, I, I would like to present before I come to my area. Uh, uh, now, uh, uh, what I read from the data, nearly uh, 22 cities all over the world, I mean, highly polluted cities, 30 uh, cities are there all over, uh, all over the world. Out of this one, 22 cities are there only in India. I mean, uh, from that, you can understand that. I mean, two thirds of the uh, mostly uh, uh, highly polluted uh, cities are there in India. And even the Delhi has been, I mean, declared as the, uh, I mean, uh, pollute, capital of polluted cities, uh, polluted capitals, even among the capital cities, uh, Delhi is the number uh, first um, in, uh, in, in polluting the uh, air, in polluting the water, in polluting, I mean, environment, uh, in all criteria. That is the condition with our capital. And uh, uh, 20, uh, 22 cities already, I mean, uh, polluting, I mean, highly pollute, uh, polluting, po po I mean, uh, suffering from uh, pollution. And this is the condition uh, with respect to pollution alone. And another thing, uh, India is the fifth largest polluted, I mean, uh, I mean uh, as far as rank, ranks of polluted countries are concerned, India being considered as the fifth, I mean, uh, polluted country in the world. I mean, with respect to air, water, I mean, in all uh, aspects. And, uh, and we come to another side, India is the sixth largest economy in the world in GDP terms. India is the sixth largest economy in the world. And before, I mean, Corona, I mean, started, I mean, 2019-18, in fact, India was the fifth largest economy in the world. So as far as economy, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in, in money, nominal, uh, money terms concerned, India is the fifth largest economy in the world. In the case of pollution also, India is the fifth largest economy in the world. And uh, in, in this world, world in this this is the only aspect. Uh, both, I mean, uh, as far as pollution aspect is concerned, as far as development aspect is concerned, uh, India and the pollution moving together. But in most of the criteria, we have just opposed uh, relationship. And uh, uh, one side, uh, I mean, the people are, I mean, talking about uh, we have to protect the forest, we have to protect the water, we have to protect the, I mean, uh, uh, air, we have to protect the, I mean, uh, uh, lakes, bonds, everything. Uh, let's keep though for that i am coming later on first let's let us see that uh, as i told that uh, india is the fifth largest uh, sixth largest economy i mean it gets corona affected our economy too little bit so now is the sixth largest economy in the world uh, and uh, uh, as far as the gdp i mean the component is concerned uh, agriculture contributes at present i am telling that this year data 21 uh, 2021 data i am telling that uh, agriculture uh, contributed nearly 20 percent of our gdp and before uh, Corona, it was around 14%. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, 13.5% or 14.5% to, to that level. So Corona helped agriculture sector to increase its contribution to GDP. This is uh, one side. And the another side, uh, the the amount of people in engaged with the agriculture sector in 1950s, around 65% of people directly engaged with the agriculture sector. 
பட் ஈவன் ஆஃப்டர் செவன்டி ஃபோர் இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் இண்டிபெண்டன்ஸு இம்ப்ளிமெண்டேஷன் ஆஃப் ஐ மீன் டுவெல் ஃபயர் பிளான்ஸு இந்த நியர்லி ஃபார்ட்டி நைன் பர்சன்ட் ஆஃப் அவர் ஒர்க் ஃபோர்ஸ் டேரக்ட்லி என்கேஜ் வித் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் செக்டர் அண்ட் டியூ டு த அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் செக்டர் இஸ் நாட் ப்ராஃபிட்டபிள் எ ரால் எ லார்ஜ் நம்பர் ஆஃப் ஐ மீன் பீப்புள் ஃப்ரம் அக்ரிகல் செக்டர் மைக்ரேட்டட் டு அர்பன் ஏரியாஸ் இன் சர்ச் ஆஃப் தேர் லைவ்லிஹுட் அல்டிமேட்லி வாட் ஹேப்பன் இல் ஒன் ஃபிஃப்டி மில்லியன் பீப்புள் மைக்ரேட்டட் ஃப்ரம் வில்லேஜஸ் ஆர் அக்ரிகல்ச்சர் டாமினேட்டட் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் டு அர்பன் ஏரியாஸ் இன் சர்ச் ஆஃப் டு ஒர்க் இன் த அன்ஆர்கனைஸ்ட் செக்டர் அண்ட் இன் சர்ச் ஆஃப் ஐ மீன் மீட்டிங் தேர் லைவ்லிஹுட் this is when suddenly when uh, gomda announced i mean uh, lockdown of the country uh, uh, do you know what happened uh, this 150 million people uh, already affected in addition to this one nearly uh, government uh, government uh, government itself has clearly stated that uh, around 800 million people i mean uh, 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 life of 800 million people under question now uh, their livelihood is under i mean uh, under question now and the government of india announced certain packages like i mean uh, prime minister's karib kalyan anna yojana if you look at the basic idea of that program this program meant for 800 crore population in india uh, their livelihood is uh, i mean under threat at present i mean that is why government of india announced i mean uh, packages i mean one kg is for uh, 5 kg for rice 5 kg of wheat or one kg of dal i mean oil certain things through these programs so even after 74 years of independence we keep around 800 million people under under food insecure condition this is one of the factor we have to keep in our mind that and another important thing is that after after i mean 74 years of independence only last year i mean only after this present government came to power nearly 410 million people opened bank accounts in india i mean just recently i mean even after 12th completion of 12th five year plan only nearly 400 million uh, million people more than around 410 million people opened bank account for the first time in india just imagine that more than america's total population i mean just now they know what is bank how to open a bank account how to keep a bank number i mean uh, 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 something like that and uh, this is one side another important side is that uh, even this uh, socio economic uh, census data of 2011 has clearly stated that uh, around 500 million people in, in india have less than 5 cents of land you just imagine that 5 cents of land 500 million people have less than 5 cents of land i am telling 5 cents of land sometimes even landless people also that is why we often wish to say that landless agriculture fully workers in india so we have to take care of 800 million i mean uh, uh, workers as per the present um, prime minister karib kalyan anna yojana and 500 million people landless people are there i mean uh, fully workers in india we have to take care of those people and also now 400 million people just now opened bank accounts in india and just opposite to that one india has around 140 million uh, i mean uh, farm households in india 140 million farm households and out of that one uh, nearly 124 million uh, farm households uh, i mean farm uh, people are having less than i mean 5 acres of land less than 5 acres of land even actually if you tell that uh, 99.43% of our farmers are having less than 2 hectares of land only in india that is the main reason the government of india recently announced that uh, uh, those who are having less than uh, i mean 2 acres of land will be given uh, 6000 rupees per annum now uh, one side uh, i mean uh, this many landless people are there another side uh, 800 million people food security of uh, 800 million people are under threat at present and out of the total farm i mean land holders uh, uh, nearly 99. i mean 4 3% uh, of the farmers are having less than i mean 3 uh, acres of land only they are simply called uh, i mean um, average land holders or marginal land holders i mean as per the whatever the government uh, i mean definition now for the development of all these all these people we what we need i am telling that a simple example 1950s 1950s india as well as china had a similar pattern of i mean problems india had a poverty problem nearly 50 to bust of indians were living below the poverty line not even have a single time food at that time and uh, imbalanced growth was very much i mean uh, uh, present uh, present at 1950s and uh, uh, unbalanced regional uh, uh, development uh, and uh, uh, no industrial development i mean malnutrition was very higher level same was the problem uh, china was concerned in 1950s 
But uh, what happened uh, in 1979, China opened its border for foreign direct investment. 1979, I'm telling that. And uh, uh, by the time after uh, opening its border for foreign direct investment, uh, now China uh, is the leading industrialized country in the world. I mean, we may not, world countries may not recognize that one, in fact. Uh, but still, if you look at, I mean, uh, uh, India, China has more foreign exchange reserve than India's foreign, India's total, uh, I mean, GDP. That, that is a reality. India, India at present, India's GDP are around 3 trillion, but China's foreign exchange reserve alone more than, I mean, 3 trillion. And how this development came for China, in 1979, China opened its border for foreign direct investment, and many investors, foreign global companies, I mean, foreigners, flooded into Chinese, uh, I mean, uh, certain air market areas known as the special economic zone area. And they started industries and they started manufacturing products. They started taking the product to world markets and in the form of exports. So uh, four or five things happened. China received a lot of money from foreign countries, uh, foreign uh, international companies for investment. That investment led to a lot of, created a lot of employment opportunities. And uh, investment led to a lot of uh, production, manufacturing production, uh, industrial production. Then more production took place uh, and uh, more export also took place. I mean, uh, whatever product uh, they produced within the special economic zone, I mean, they started taking that product to the world markets. And uh, result that when they started exporting more to the international mar market, uh, they started getting more foreign exchange reserve. And uh, so uh, investment came, uh, it created employment opportunities, it created production, it created exports and brought foreign exchange reserves. These five areas, China made greatest achievements in the world. I'm not referring America or European countries uh, as a model for India. I'm telling about uh, the country, I mean, had whatever problems we had in 1950s, China also had. Now, in 1979, China opened its borders. 1994, it became a upper, uh, I mean, above the poverty level, uh, level country. In 2000, I mean, uh, 17, it became, I mean, middle level economy. In 2017, uh, China became a rich economy. Now, uh, China is not a poor economy. China is a uh, upper, upper, I mean, uh, rich level of economy. That is the main reason. Even the Corona period, uh, nobody was on the street for, I mean, uh, either for food or, I mean, uh, water or, I mean, shelter, whatever maybe it is distributed by the Chinese government. People are in the uh, rich, rich level at present, a rich economy at present. And uh, my question is, we all talking about, I mean, yesterday also, I would understand that, I mean, we all talking about protecting forest, protecting, I mean, river, protecting, I mean, water, protecting air, protecting everything. My question is, all these, I mean, environmental acts, all these, I, I mean, forest acts, all these, I mean, pollution control acts applicable only to India? Because world countries, world, I mean, world, world bank, UN or I mean international organizations, they all talk about I mean protecting the forest, protecting. We have twenty-four percent of the land is under forest only. But uh, I mean uh, by the time uh, British left India, we have only seventeen around eighteen percent area only under forest cover. But now we we, we keep on increasing that only twenty-four uh, percent in the name of uh, protecting the wildlife sanctuaries, in the name of protecting the ecosystem, in the name of protecting I mean uh, bird sanctuary. So. We are great in, in protecting all the, I mean, uh, wild beast, birds, animals, whatever it may be. And uh, let us keep that on the other side. Why, I mean, uh, countries like China, uh, I mean, uh, did not give that much importance to this type of, I mean, uh, aspects. Because in India, I, I can openly tell you, we cannot, I mean, uh, lay uh, eight and highways in India. But there are protests. Uh, there are court cases. Everybody is going to a court. Everybody is going to, I mean, I mean, uh, getting stay from the political parties to NGOs and uh, most even academicians also. I mean, uh, most of the cases I, I can tell you. India government is taking so many initiatives to have world class road in India. I mean, eight line roads. I mean, uh, four line roads, eight line roads. But we are not able to implement those programs. You must keep in your mind that we need infrastructure development. If you go to China, I'm, I'm not why I'm not referring America and European countries. Uh, their, they, those countries are already developed by the time uh, 1900 itself. These countries are already developed with the roads, other infrastructure development. I'm referring only China. After 50s only, all this development took place. China, it, it has world class, I mean, uh, eight lane highways. 
um, certain areas they have even uh, I mean, more more road facilities than other areas china has a proverb if we want to prosper first lay roads if we want to prosper first lay roads this is a chinese one of the chinese major proverb that is why china is laying roads everywhere wherever china chinese goes first they low, they low, they create a roads road facilities and infrastructure facilities like port development i mean road development i mean dam development irrigation development whatever mass scale not a small scale mass scale they develop and uh, whether this China followed any of the environmental acts prescribed by the World Bank, IMF, or uh, you may be knowing international environmental organizations, something like that, whether they followed any of these, uh, I mean, uh, rules and regulations for development of China? Uh, yes, I mean, you uh, people, I mean, to environmentalists, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, give answer for that. I am I'm in favor of environment only. But at the same time, I mean, uh, when our people are going to America, our people are going to Dubai to, to see uh, what type of road they have, what type of buildings they have, what type of hotels they have, what type of tourism development programs they have, something like that. Uh, I mean, uh, while they're enjoying all these facilities in, uh, in foreign countries, and uh, why they are not thinking about, I mean, having similar uh, such facilities, uh, I mean, uh, in India or create, to be created in India, I still I'm not able to, I mean, get their uh, whatever mindset they have. Another another country I am coming to uh, coming uh, coming to your side. I mean, uh, you take the case of Singapore. You take the case of Singapore. Singapore is a small, I mean, city. I mean, uh, country. If we go to the marina area, even I cannot imagine that. Uh, not even a single space of uh, land is left. I mean, in the marina area. They have constructed and uh, buildings even uh, even inside the I mean uh, ocean inside the ocean that uh, the marina area that constructed. Uh, you can you cannot imagine that. And uh, uh, my, my question is whether, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Lee Kwan, one who, I mean, uh, created that, uh, I mean, uh, Singapore city, uh, not considered the environmental acts of international organizations or uh, uh, pollution control acts, I mean, uh, prescribed by, I mean, uh, uh, UNL, World Bank, uh, th th those things, I mean, to be uh, discussed. I mean, uh, not only that one, it, another, uh, another example I'm coming, you take the case of Dubai, a, a small country, before in the before 1900 we never heard about any of these countries uh, emirates except i mean saudi arabia or even mecca medina and uh, baghdad uh, something like that we heard we know about uh, mecca medina and uh, baghdad because these are the trades i mean uh, trade centers i mean uh, baghdad played a major role in importing uh, spice items from eastern i mean uh, uh, india and other uh, chinese other parts and uh, i mean is, is, and used to sell the, everything to the Western countries. So Baghdad, everybody knows very well. Uh, Baghdad, the, the present Iraq city, I mean, Ira, country of Iraq. And we know about Baghdad, but we, we ne nobody knows about Dubai, Qatar, Sarja, uh, I mean, uh, Abu Dhabi, whether we, we, whether we, our students uh, are when, whether we studied anything, any history about all these regions while, while studying, I mean, uh, plus two or college level, we never heard. But nowadays, you just see that, uh, uh, Dubai, a small country, a small, I mean, a city country, created, I mean, uh, uh, better than America's infrastructure development. A road, you just you see, you see the roads, whatever road they have, you see the top, uh, tall buildings, even better than Twin Towers, even in Malaysia. They have that one. And, and, and another important factor, what I want to share with you, they have filled the, I mean, uh, that uh, uh, ocean, they have filled the ocean with, I mean, uh, with uh, sand and other and, uh, other materials. Eh? They have constructed, I mean, uh, palm leaf hotels. Why I am telling that? Eh? We too have land in India. Even I am telling about the Kerala case also. I mean, uh, here recently, I mean, last year, I mean, just a um, year for last year, uh, yeah, 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 residential apartments, three or four residential apartments were demolished by the High Court, I mean, order from uh, from India. The main reason was that uh, they have violated the violated the Coastal Regulation Act, and so these buildings should be demolished. These buildings should be demolished. They have carried out. I mean, well and good. But question is uh, whether uh, Dubai uh, is not having that type of Coastal Regulation Act, and whether uh, how, how how Dubai government permitted uh, go for I mean uh, filling the uh, ocean and constructing I mean uh, uh, world class uh, hotels, uh, restaurants. Uh, I mean, uh, adventure parks uh, and uh, uh, sports, uh, I mean, uh, that type of, I mean, that uh, that should be answered. So, thing is that uh, in India, 
in the name of protecting the i mean wildlife in the name of protecting the animals in the name of protecting the i mean uh, i mean uh, forest i mean wh what we are doing i mean we are we are not allowing the government of india even uh, manmohan singh brought best policy programs in india i mean uh, we, 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 should, we should not blame we had an excellent economist as a prime minister and uh, like lee kwan and he only brought all the most of the i mean brought excellent what we are enjoying the uh, net facilities and all he uh, he's the person behind all these things and he also brought i mean uh, uh, he, he designed for i mean world class infrastructure facilities in india even when vajpayee uh, uh, was there as a prime minister he also designed india should be uh, india should have world class i mean road facilities india should have bullet train programs so many i mean uh, i mean uh, development programs like i mean to see india like i mean america sees india like uh, south korea see india like i mean uh, european countries but unfortunately every day every day each development programs of industrialization programs investment programs i mean uh, in, i mean particularly road development bridge development uh, i mean uh, expansion uh, developments all these i mean development uh, programs were ended in the court uh, either in the form of litigation so court cases and also uh, some of the political politicians uh, political parties also for the their personal benefits also i mean uh, inducing this type of ngos inducing this type of i mean uh, i mean uh, protesters to go against the type of schemes uh, i mean inducing the farmers go against the type of i mean development schemes something like that ultimately what is the result of all these i mean uh, <coughs> protests against i mean uh, development schemes like industrialization programs i mean road network programs uh, a park development programs expansion programs a dam uh, development programs the result is that we are not able to create employment opportunities for our younger children the thing is that every year nearly 12 million children are coming out of our uh, schools and colleges particularly uh, colleges nearly 10 million graduates post graduates and 1.5 million engineering graduates are coming out of our uh, our our university colleges and institutions and the government is not able to provide employment only for 4 million uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, uh, graduates and engineers the remaining around 8 million uh, children they are not able to get any job opportunities in india and ultimately what we are telling that uh, america is not i mean uh, giving visa for our children uh, dubai is not giving visa for our children we are blaming other countries instead of creating uh, i mean uh, uh, employment opportunities for our children within our country by by creating more industries by investing more on industries more, more investment on more infrastructure development what we are telling america is not favor of uh, taking indian laborers workers uh, dubai is not taking uh, not in favor of taking indian workers uh, we are blaming other countries and uh, so the result is that uh, Uh, we are poor in infrastructure development we are very very poor i i can tell you that, that is the reason i am telling that uh, a dubai a, 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 a country has no historical backgrounds i am i'm telling you and uh, what we are telling that uh, we have taj mahal we have ecosystem uh, four eco uh, ecological sensitive areas we have western ghats is one of the ecological sensitive areas western himalayas one of the ecological sensitive areas eastern himalayas one of the ecological sensitive areas even andaman nicobar also another ecological sensitive area we have four ecological sensitive areas in india but uh, unfortunately we are not able to attract enough tourists for, to see i mean these areas we have palaces we have heritage centers we have ecosystem we have environmental bird sanctuaries animal sanctuaries so ever so many things we have but we are not able to attract more than 10 million foreign tourists to in the west india with all these i mean uh, i mean natural i mean uh, resources but a small country dubai i mean just before corona nearly 15 million foreigners visited dubai 15 million people visited dubai you just imagine that not even it is not like even a district level area compared to uh, uh, in indian any of the major cities a small area attracted this many number of tourists we are telling we have so many cultures so many history and uh, th 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 2000 years morning professor told that if, i mean even literature we have we are talking about i mean uh, environmental system i mean morning i i i i heard i mean uh, the 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 in, in the tennis system i mean how we are classifying the lands like that and uh, but with all these i mean merits with us why we are not able to attract i mean uh, foreign tourists in india 
why we are not able to attract enough foreign direct investment into india and why we are not able to attract uh, i mean world brains to india to invest to make india as their destination for investment to make india as a destination for production make india as a destination for marketing and so th those things should be answered that is why i am telling that uh, environmental law ecological law everything is correct definitely and uh, but it should be made applicable to all countries whether it is japan is concerned it should be made applicable whether dubai is concerned it should be applicable dubai also it is applicable i mean uh, singapore also it is applicable china also it, it should be made applicable not india alone india alone should not take care of the entire universe ecosystem that's what uh, what i feel that uh, now there is a international association they wanted to see that uh, uh, india has enough i mean uh, i mean western gods uh, india has a very good i mean i mean uh, uh, this god areas uh, forest areas uh, and the entire universe ecosystem i mean uh, should be take care of, to, should be take care, uh, care of by indian indian forest alone that's what uh, i feel and for that what they are telling what they are uh, insisting and no more development no more development uh, and for that no more development only they are coming with so many acts uh, coastal regulation act uh, pollution control act and uh, forest act and uh, by bringing all these acts what we are what we are telling to the world that uh, uh, we are protecting the forest area, but uh, who is protecting the people? Uh, who is going to create employment opportunities for our people? Nobody is there. Now, what, what government, finally, what government of India is doing at present? Uh, now, instead of going for a massive investment to create employment opportunities, go, not only central government, even state government also, providing rice at free of cost, uh, wheat at free of cost, maybe uh, charging very very minimum amount, uh, sometimes packages, I mean packages with vegetables, fruits, uh, I mean oil or dal and uh, that, uh, this type of cereal items. Uh, that, so these are all, I mean, uh, maybe, I mean, by giving uh, 30 kgs of rice or oil, this will help them to uh, to, to keep their, I mean, day to day, I mean, uh, I mean uh, life, I mean, sustainable. But we need, not, this is not the development, development is different. Development is different. We have to see, we have to learn from, I mean, our neighboring countries. What happened to South Korea? What happened to Singapore? What, hap what is going on in Malaysia? What is going on in China? What is going on in Taiwan? Those things we have to study. I mean, we have to study. We have to study. That is why I'm telling that. Eh? I mean, uh, uh, we, we are always telling that eh, if, we, if we bring a eight-lane road, our, uh, our, our farmers will lose their, I mean, uh, farm land. But forget about, I mean, why you are, why you are want to lay only through the farm load? Just take the land, waste land. You take, you take the land which is not utilized for, I mean, I mean, paddy cultivation or, I mean, or seasonal crop, own seasonal crop. You take those lands accordingly, change the direction. And uh, eight lane road will affect the, I mean, hill areas, mountain areas. And uh, in the name of keeping the mountain, in the name of keeping the, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, plain areas, and uh, there are so many cases. Ultimately, uh, we are not able to create employment opportunities in India. And uh, because of restrict, since our acts are so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 this type of, I mean, with a lot of rules and regulations. Uh, finally the foreigners also found it very difficult to invest in india because uh, uh, they have to approach the concerned ministers uh, concerned uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, district i mean collector uh, industry promotion agencies ultimately corruption is taking place really uh, india one side uh, as the fifth largest economy in the name of uh, pollution and in the case of corruption ours rank is 63rd uh, nearly uh, nearly 63rd is our i mean uh, uh, corruption index is nearly 63rd, not uh, 66, I mean, uh, percent, 66th uh, place in India. Corruption. Why there is a corruption? Because we have uh, uh, set up rules and regulations. We have certain rules and regulations. And so, because of the, this, this type of rules and regulations, uh, the foreigners are, I mean, finding it very difficult to convince the, I mean, our government. I mean, uh, uh, you may be knowing very well what happened in Tutukulin. Uh, that uh, sterilite, I mean, factory. I mean, uh, the industry uh, definitely it, it, it polluted the air, it polluted the water, something like that. But my question is, we have one pollution control board. We have one pollution control board, and it's seventy-four something. I, I, I'm not. I mean, exactly. I'm not. Nineteen seventy-four. Government India pollution control board. I mean, uh, pollution control act. This act is supposed to, to take care of the uh, uh, the industries which are having I mean, pollutant nature. 
so they have to visit the industries frequently they have to i mean uh, they have to check the air they, they have to check the water they have to check the i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, any diseases uh, around the company corporation something like that it is their duty but uh, by the time when government of india uh, tamil nadu government or government of india uh, decided to close down that uh, sterilized company uh, nobody i mean uh, uh, asked what is the role of i mean the pollution control act board what this pollution control board did for i mean for, for so many years if this board is acted i mean efficiently effectively as uh, sincerely with the dedication uh, the sterilized i mean uh, the pollution of the sterilized company would have been avoided but unfortunately this board become i mean uh, the board officials in the board become corrupt and uh, getting money from this uh, i mean uh, company uh, they simply ignored whatever i mean uh, i mean whatever i mean type of pollution the sterilized company i mean uh, polluting the air or water or or, or uh, something whatever it may be so finally what is the result that i mean the, the when the board become ineffective i finally the government of india a supreme court interfered and the industry been closed down the, uh, this should not be there this type of i mean development should not be there uh, uh, by that if the particular industry is polluting the air or if, if, if it has the nature of polluting the air water or uh, something like that uh, the pollution control board should i mean direct them properly i mean what are the uh, mechanism they got to pollution to avoid i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, water pollution there are so many mechanisms and finally they closed down the sector i mean okay well and good that industry polluted so we closed down you take the case of tirupur city in tirupur city the, there is a noyel or i mean river noyel river is there almost all the i mean spinning mills i mean spinning mills uh, uh, what they did uh, it is it is highly polluting that the noyel river i mean nearly for around 80 to 90 kilometers downstream of the, that river i mean no cultivation at all just imagine that nearly 90 kilometers from the, uh, the on the downstream of the river the the pot, water cannot be used for cultivation whether either for paddy cultivation or groundnut cultivation or even uh, coconut cultivation nobody can uh, use that water for even drinking water any purpose they cannot do it but there also government of tamil nadu is having a pollution control i mean the pollution control board is uh, the officials used to go there and check the water level or the the, the type of chemicals there the spinning mills are using uh, or the coloring mills are uh, using in a, in in in, in tirupur they are supposed to go there but they they never do it but they are taking steps i mean once you once you decided to i mean control the i mean uh, spinning mills to control the i mean uh, uh, control the polluting water or treat the water first and they have to go there and they have to check it but unfortunately our officials become corrupt and they are collecting very huge amount of money from this i mean polluting i mean factories and in convenience with the mlas mps ward members i mean even mayors they all join together and collecting money illegally from this this industrial entrepreneurs and allowing the uh, textile mills to let the water uh, into the river uh, and uh, this polluted water can be treated it is happening very well in western countries the polluted water from uh, textile mills can be, uh, be treated well and that water can be used for i mean even other purposes other purposes in the sense that for toilet purpose they can use it even for uh, irrigation of plants uh, within the i mean uh, their factories for those purpose they can use that water uh, uh, within the uh, industrial sector but unfortunately that water they are not treating the water properly and uh, instead of treat, instead of treating the water finally what they are doing they let the water into the noyel or river when when there is a heavy rain or uh, in the absence of i mean uh, uh, supervision and finally the entire river is highly polluted now my question is uh, uh, supreme court interfered and stopped the production of i mean uh, sterilized i mean Uh, company to manufacture a uh, copper whatever maybe why supreme court is not interfered in the tripur issue yes he- here you have to ask the question the environmentalists who are who are very much concerned about protecting the uh, forest who are uh, concerned about protecting the uh, roads uh, who are concerned about protecting the uh, i mean uh, farmers from uh, a- laying the eight lane highways something like that why this environmentalist i mean not going to tripur i mean to save the uh, the the farmers who are who are affected already affected around 80 kilometers uh, farmlands in in, in tripur uh, i mean noyela downstream from tripur are very much affected you cannot use that water for uh, you cannot use the land for any other uh, purposes 
why this envoy list did not visit uh, Tirupur area or file a complaint against uh, 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 these entrepreneurs in the Supreme Court or High Court, whatever may be the court, and to against the mills. But uh, nobody will talk about that one. I mean, they will tell that they, they, they accept the, the, the Tirupur uh, companies are polluting the I mean, river, they accept it. But uh, uh, whatever steps they have taken, whether they, uh, whether they went to the court, I mean, uh, to stop all the uh, textile mills to stop uh, manufacturing uh, uh, coloring of, of their uh, clothes in Tirupur, uh, nothing happened. I mean, uh, if, if you ask them, they will tell so many stories uh, behind that one. So that way, uh, one said what, the, what in India, what, what people are telling that is, if the people are very much concerned about protecting the uh, environment, the ecosystem and uh, 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 deep forest and all. Another side, they concentrate only on uh, wherever development is coming up, wherever development is coming up. See, textile mills uh, can provide jobs for the, the semi-skilled workers, uh, maximum 10,000 rupees, uh, 15,000 rupees per month they can earn according to the peace system, the peace rate system under which they are working. But we, we need employment opportunities for our educated engineers. We need employment opportunities for our children who are studying in, 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 in arts colleges, science colleges, uh, that type of we, we, we need employment opportunities for them. Uh, Tirupur area only uh, eighth standard failed student or ninth standard failed student can go there and work for uh, 9,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees, well and good. Okay. But we cannot send out, but most of the, what I, uh, what I read, I mean, some of the reports that uh, even graduates are working in, in, in Tirupur mills, graduates, postgraduates are working uh, just for, I mean, uh, uh, 400 rupees, I mean, 350 rupees in those mills uh, because no other opportunities, no other opportunities available here. And another aspect I want to tell you, and in the case of protect the Western Cards, in 2010, I think, I mean, Government of India constituted a committee uh, uh, known as a God Kill Committee. It is known as Western Cards Ecology uh, Experts Panel, something like that. It was in 2010, Government of India constituted a committee to how to protect the Western Cards because, I mean, uh, six, nearly six states from Gujarat to, I mean, Maharashtra and Goa, uh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu. Kerala, uh, these all these states uh, already occupying the western guards forest areas of, of the, uh, and the uh, highly rain uh, fertile areas. Uh, and uh, because of that one, the rainfall is decreasing. Something so many allegations about the western guards uh, like Mon like Monar, uh, Monar, like a Monar, I mean, Uti, and even uh, Pona, like area, a uh, lot of deforestation took place. Uh, so they wanted to protect the uh, western guards. Uh, and uh, what to do, how to protect the Western Guards. Uh, they, I mean, they constitute a committee under uh, Professor Godgill, Madhav Godgill, generally known as the Madhav Godgill Committee. He submitted the report in 2011. In fact, he, he submitted a very good report in 2011, how to protect the forest area. Around 160,000 square kilometer area, the Western Guard is coming, around six states. Uh, around 250 million people are, I mean, uh, supposed to, I mean, get benefit from these um, Western Guards. At 2011, he submitted a report. You cannot imagine that those who are in favor of protecting the forest area, those who are in favor of protecting the environment, those who are in favor of protecting the environment, never opened the, I mean, the report. When he submitted the report to the central government, it did not came out. I and mean, what he submitted, what are the features of the act, nobody knows. Finally, somebody filed a RTA again uh, for, for getting the uh, recommendations of God, Madhav Godkill Committee. And what uh, after getting the report, it was a great shock for uh, nearly six states, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, uh, Goa, and uh, Maharashtra, and even a little bit Gujarat also. What Madhav Godkill stated that uh, nearly 67% of these, I mean, uh, Western Guards uh, should be protected. 67% of the Western Guards should be protected. But 67 percent of the Western Guards protected mean already this Western Guards is, uh, I mean, uh, is having a deep, I mean, uh, settlement areas. From Kerala, you, you may be knowing very that, very, very that. From Munar city to, I mean, most of the, I mean, Western uh, tea gardens, uh, I mean, uh, uh, garden gardens, uh, rubber plantations, I mean, uh, all these plant plantations are only in the Western Guards. People already settled, even before British left India. Our people already settled in those, I mean, uh, areas, uh, and they have uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of acres of, I mean, uh, estates, I mean, uh, tea estates, uh, coffee estates, uh, garden estates, uh, I mean, uh, pepper estates, something like that. Now, 
the what i mean madhav gadkil has stated that uh, 67% of these forest area should be declared as a protected area and those who are already settled in those forest areas should be i mean uh, should be uh, resettled somewhere out of the forest areas just imagine that uh, those people who, who who are very much concerned about environmental system ecosystem they never opened anything about this i mean uh, uh, this recommendation and finally a uh, 2000 uh, uh, there were so many protests even kerala government protested against that system kannada government protested against a god kill formula even almost all the six states protested against it in good tamil nadu i am telling that that is why i am telling that tamil nadu people uh, they are very much concerned about protecting environment at the same time when god kill uh, i mean recommended something that to protect the western gods uh, the government was not not ready to accept and those environmentalists who are behind this god kill formula also not able to go to the court and get the act implemented uh, uh, get the uh, recommendation implemented now what happened uh, central government formed another committee later on they formed another committee that is uh, kasur rangan committee he may be knowing very well that who who submitted the new education policy and he uh, uh, after madhav kadkil uh, and uh, kasur rangan committee was formed and 2013 told it was formed 13 he submitted another report and what happened he reduced the area of protection of western ghats from 67% to 37% i mean uh, he reduced the number of uh, area under forest, forest cover from 67 to 37 percent and unfortunately his recommendation also not accepted by any of these six states not only six states any of the i mean even environmentalists also i mean not i mean uh, 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 not coming forward to why it, it has been reduced uh, and uh, w- w- in what way we can protect the forest area i mean uh, nobody nobody is there both are i mean godkill you, you may be knowing that madhav godkill is one of the best uh, environmentalist in uh, not only india in world level but even this recommendation was not not accepted by even uh, our own governments both central as well as uh, state governments and uh, at the same time our environmentalists are very much concerned about uh, uh, i mean protect the farmers uh, uh not to, not to take over the farmland for uh, road development not to construct bridges for road development not for so th- that way i'm i'm telling that and finally uh, uh, both acts were not implemented scientifically uh, properly in india both madhav gadkil committee also uh, recommendation also not implemented and kasur rangan committee recommendation also not impl- imp- implemented though he reduced the acre of land under uh, forest cover from 67% to 37% uh, this is one side now i am coming uh, to uh, other side development so what what i would like to suggest is that india need india uh, india needs development not in the way development like i mean uh, uh, i mean like i mean uh, singapore or malaysia india has around 1300 around 39 40 million population this many population needs uh, i mean uh, at the time of independence we had no middle class population in india at the time of independence we had only zamindars landlords some uh, industrialists uh, estate owners uh, and uh, that that type of people only we had but at present we have around 300 to 300 million middle class population in india what government of india is telling that uh, by the time when when 2050 comes at present around 30% of our population are uh, living in urban areas by the time 2050 around 50% are even more than 50% of our population supposed to be i mean uh, in urban areas with uh, with modern facilities and if if people are migrating uh, if people are i mean uh, uh, if people are not i mean uh, created pro, uh, people are not provided enough sufficient employment opportunities in urban areas what would be the result what the agriculture sector is not i mean profitable in at present in india agriculture is not profitable in india I nearly uh, as i told that nearly 49% of our people directly engaged with agriculture sector and already government of india already recorded that if an opportunity is created uh, outside the agriculture sector 42% of our farmers are not uh, ready to be farmers i mean that is 42% of farmers are ready to move out of the agriculture sector at present in india if just 42% of our agriculture uh, farmers are ready to move out of agriculture sector uh, at present i suppose 49% means nearly 700 million people are supposed to be farmers in india 
of 42 percent of these, I mean, uh, uh, 700 million people supposed to move out of the agriculture sector, then where we will create employment opportunities for them? Where will we create employment opportunities for them? Uh, how long they can work in the unorganized sector? Already we are telling that uh, 92 percent of our workforce is engaged with the unorganized sector without proper insurance facilities, without proper uh, disability benefits, without proper accident benefits, without proper uh, graduate benefits, uh, leave salary benefits, and so many other benefits. That is the main reason. These 150 million people, I mean, started walking towards their villages when the government of India locked the country in March 2020. Uh, I mean, that was the result. So what we need, we need, I mean, we, we need industrialization. We need industrialization. We, how we can promote industries? We have so many options with us. We, at present, we lack most of the facilities. We lack most of the facilities. We don't have eight lane highways in India from Kashmir to Trivandrum or Kanyagomari. We don't have eight lane highways. We don't have eight lane highways from Kohati to, I mean, Salimar in, in, in Rajasthan. We don't have a bullet train scheme in India. In, in 2010, China introduced a bullet train in India. China introduced a, a country poorer than India. China was in 1950, like our, our like poverty, with la, suffered from a lot of poverty. In, in 1958 to 64, nearly 45 million people died in China due to poverty. Such a country, 2010, they introduced a bullet train. But still, we don't have that bullet train scheme in India. So we have to introduce a bullet train scheme from Delhi to a Kashmir. I'm telling, I, I will not tell from anything from Delhi. I, I tell from Kashmir only. From Srinagar to uh, Trivandrum or Kanyavamri, we have to introduce a bullet train scheme. Bullet train scheme, we have to introduce, similarly from Guwahati to, I mean, uh, Salimar, we have to introduce a bullet train scheme. And connect all the bullet train, scheme, train with all the major capitals from Bangalore, Chennai, uh, I mean, uh, Mumbai or Bhubaneswar, whatever may be the state capitals. Connect them with, with, with this, I mean, bullet train uh, scheme. And uh, you see that uh, we should feel, Indians should feel proud of our infrastructure and facilities. How long we see we see that Dubai is, I mean, uh, we go to Dubai and enjoy the facilities. How long we go to Singapore, enjoy the facilities there. How long we go to South Africa, Seoul to enjoy their facilities. Our people should feel, foreigners should come to India. They should feel proud of our infrastructure and facilities. India is best country. We can travel uh, eight, through eight lane highways and without any, I mean, traffic problems with all the modern uh, facilities. Nobody's feeling like that. What we are telling? Uh, we are fifth largest sixth largest economy in the in the world we have one more term purchasing power parity criteria if you use the purchasing power parity criteria it is the third largest economy in the world you see that third largest economy in the world has no bullet train no eight lane highways and no tourist world tourist i mean uh, places in uh, india we are telling we only claim that uh, taj, I mean, taj mahal is, is a world tourist are coming or Raja Raja Solan, I mean, in Tanjavur, uh, is an excellent building. It's well and good. But how many foreigners are coming and, uh, I mean, watching those, I mean, heritage centers? Every foreigner is spreading to Dubai city and enjoying the, I mean, the, the type of infrastructure and facilities created in that, that region. Everybody is spreading to a Bali in Indonesia and enjoying the type of world class, I mean, hotel facilities, restaurant facilities, and uh, uh, water sports facilities, I mean, adventure tourism facilities, trucking facilities, they're enjoying. What type of facilities we have created in India? In the name of protecting the forest, we are not allowing the develop our areas. Yes, we need eight lane highways. We need bullet train scheme. And uh, uh, if, we, if we introduce these two major schemes in India, uh, definitely cement industry will grow. Yes, for this, I mean, a, a world class infrastructure development program, we, uh, we need a lot of cement. We need a lot of steel. We need a lot of, I mean, plastic items. We need a lot of, I mean, uh, iron, iron and steel products, polymer products. If if we implement these schemes, uh, automatically all these industries will be activated. Steel industry will grow. I mean, cement industry will grow. Iron industry, iron industry will grow. Plastic industry will grow. Computer software industry will grow. What what else we need? If all these industries are I mean promoted, they will create I mean millions millions of employment opportunities. Millions millions of employment opportunities. If millions and millions of employment opportunities are created. Why our children should go to, I mean, uh, countries like Gulf countries to work uh, in that hot temperature? Why our children to go to European countries to work in the, that type of cold, I mean, freezing uh, temperature? Why our children should go to America? Our children, we can use our brain power for our development. We have enough mineral resources. For, for, for example, I can tell you, go to, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, Odisha. Odisha is full of, I mean, uh, minerals. 
coal, everything. We cannot imagine that when when Arabian Arabian countries are using their I mean natural resources uh, like oil for development, why we are not able to use our our own coal? I mean available in our country for development purpose. But there are also I mean for the environmentalists are uh, inducing the tribal people protest against I mean making use of the coal or making use of, creating uh, I mean a mine I mean a coal mine or any other mines in those areas. There are also protests. Ultimately, what is the result? The tribal people are not developed in Odisha. You just imagine that uh, Odisha is one of the worst, I mean, uh, state with respect to uh, most of the social indexes. Uh, and uh, uh, the tribal people, still, the tribal people are not having sufficient food and sufficient, I mean, clothes, sufficient housing facility. And at the same time, what we are telling, uh, we want to protect our, our environment in Odisha. What type of environment you are going to protect in those areas? And uh, these people are, I mean, uh, uh, living the same condition like I mean some of the tribal people in Ethiopia, no difference at all. I would not find any difference between Ethiopian tribals and the people who are living in, in, in Odisha. I mean without proper uh, I mean health facilities, without proper I mean, sanitary facilities, without proper I mean cloth and marketing facilities for whatever they produce in, in a very poor condition, without proper I mean housing facilities. I mean uh, uh, how long we keep the people like that? Uh, that too after seventy four years of independence. So we need industries. How long Kerala or Tamil Nadu or even Maharashtra can provide employment opportunities for the children who are coming from Odisha? How long Tamil Nadu can provide employment opportunities for people coming from West Bengal? How long Tamil Nadu can provide employment opportunities for children coming from Assam? Already Tamil Nadu, most of the governments, they restricted, I mean, providing employment opportunities to student, children who are coming from other states. In even Andhra Pradesh, 85 percent of the I mean enabled opportunities are now available only for the I mean uh, Andhra people. Even Maharashtra government brought an act, 85 percent of the enabled opportunity only for the uh, I mean uh, I mean Marathi people. If every state uh, do like that, that where these uh, Odisha people will go, where the Madhya Pradesh people will go, where the Bihar people will go, where the Uttar Pradesh people will go, where the I mean Kolkata I mean uh, West Bengal people will go, where the Assam people children will go. We need industries. We need industries in those areas. Let us make all the agriculture-based uh, states into, I mean, uh, agriculture process uh, industry-oriented, uh, I mean, uh, industrialize those uh, states. If all these states are, I mean, uh, uh, connected with this type of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, infrastructure development, this sector will promote, I mean, uh, uh, all these uh, related industries, I mean, they will create uh, millions of employment opportunities. Another suggestion I would like to suggest that is why the for our uh, I mean, your seminar is always I mean uh, uh, people will think that I'm, I'm I'm talking against that system. When we have problem in acquiring farmland for industrialization purpose, yes, that's what happened in West Bengal when uh, Tata Company wanted to set up a uh, I mean a small car company in Singur. In fact, the present chief minister Madhav Panerjee directly opposed to that scheme. Just for uh, uh, the Tata company acquired only around 900 acres of land for this uh, that uh, the small uh, small uh, Tata car company. Finally, this madam created all the problems. So Tata company left that I mean area and settled in in, in 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 Gujarat. My question is, okay, we cannot we cannot I mean acquire farmland for industrial purpose. Okay, leave it. But we have land. We have land where we have forest land. We have forest land. At least we have twenty-four percent of our land is under coming in the forest only. At least five percent of the forest land should be earmarked for industrialization. Five percent of I'm not telling ninety-nine, ninety, hundred percent uh, forest land for industrialization purpose. Five percent of the forest land should be earmarked for industries only for industrial development. Any industries, uh, if 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 this is this land is with the central government. This land is with the central government and the concerned state government also have some control over that. So 5% of the forest land should be earmarked for industrialization purpose. Any entrepreneur, any MNC, any transnational corporation, any international corporation, corporation wanted to set up industries in India on the spot is just to give, I mean, I, which area want to I mean, start an industry. Whether you want to start an industry in Gujarat, whether you want to start a set up an industry unit in Karnataka or Tamil Nadu, Kerala, whatever may be the area and on the spot central government can give you a sanction because here i mean nobody can question no because it is a central government land central government land can be given to a particular industrialization purpose 
single window through single window clearance clearance system on the spot you can sanction the uh, if, if particular industry needs uh, uh, 500 acres of land immediately you can give 500 acres of land let them set up whether the car company or computer sector industry or i mean uh, or, or, or uh, ship manufacturing industry any industry whatever may be the industry whether mobile company uh, they want to start, uh, start a mobile industry or a consumer durable industry let them start let them start here uh, 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 nobody will go to the court because it's a, it, it is central government land it is given for industrialization purpose and once industries are i mean coming like that uh, automatically the foreigners will not face any problem in india now foreigners are facing so many problems corruption is the major problem whom they have to talk whether mla they have to talk with the mla whether they talk with the mb whether talk with the industry minister or environment minister or agriculture minister whom they want to talk to invest in india they have a lot of confusions though we have so many i mean investment promotion councils in the promotion boards in india automatically all these bodies are highly corrupt bodies uh, politicians mlas mbs ward members i mean everybody is corrupt in those i mean bodies ultimately the foreigners are i mean having a lot of issues with the uh, corrupt politicians to deal with i mean uh, i mean uh, investing their money in india so this step to avoid all these type of uh, political bodies central government can allot forest land according to the requirement of the uh, particular company to start their industries anywhere in, 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 in anywhere in india particularly preference can be given to states i mean uh, eastern states but in odisha i mean west bengal uh, some like that of states can preference can be given i am i am not asking and their forest should be given to under to the mnc's only 5% every every state can allot Uh, five percent of the land for industrialization purpose on the spot you can give clearance for the uh, set up the industrial units so if, if that type of i mean arrangements are made ultimately the foreigners will not face any problem in india and the ngos or political parties i mean who are i mean very much concerned about protecting the farmland they need not worry about i mean allotting this type of land for industrialization purpose that government of india can do and for this only i i, I suggest the scheme which china introduced special economic zone scheme program 79 china introduced the special economic zone program now it become industrially advanced country 79 to just imagine that how many years over how many years over within this i mean uh, 34 years china became industrially advanced country and uh, uh, definitely if if five percent of land is allotted for uh, industrialization only for industries purpose definitely within uh, at least to 2030 at least before 2050 india will will become a full employment a self sufficiency in employment generation in india and already our new education policy clearly stated that by the time 2035 I mean, 50% of our children should enrolled for higher education we are keep on i mean giving importance to education sector but uh, but, but we are giving more we are opening more colleges we are more opening more engineering colleges we are opening i mean so many other colleges but who will create emblem emblem for these children so what i am suggesting is that uh, that type of i mean uh, industrialization special economic zone should be uh, incorporated with the 5% of forest land so that more industries will come and without any legal i mean issues i mean for the foreigners to start industries in india and the another important thing is that uh, and is government of india already announced um, i mean start up program make india program mutra scheme this type of schemes already government of india introduced to make to create entrepreneurs within india what i would like to suggest all these i mean uh, uh, start up programs mutra scheme and uh, make india program scheme can be i mean uh, i mean can have a collaboration with uh, this major industries in india or industries we are coming from abroad so that uh, their they also they, their profit level will not be affected their market marketing level will not be affected they will be incorporated with the i mean uh, growing industrial sector this is for the uh, i mean uh, new entrepreneurs who are coming forward and uh, one more aspect i would like to suggest is that uh, and uh, and uh, india is the uh, number one uh, producer of milk in the world number two in the case of production of vegetables fruits uh, cereals uh, uh, food grains items in the world at the same time though we are second in the world in most of the i mean uh, this type of agricultural products items uh, we we are able to i mean uh, we, we are not we, we, we due to lack of uh, uh, godown facilities due to lack of processing units lack of transport facilities 30% of what we are producing in india simply wasted due to lack of uh, i mean air conditioned godown facilities what i would like to suggest is that we have to have 
I mean, world class uh, air conditioned facilities uh, to 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 store the agricultural products in the villages. We have to have world class. I mean, uh, storage facilities in in uh, rural areas, and also we should have processing units, food processing industries, any any flower items, food items, uh, vegetable items, uh, all items should be processed uh, and uh, should be stored and then exported to foreign countries. For this. We need. We have to invest very huge amount of money in the rural areas in the form of uh, go downs. Uh, I mean, air conditioned go downs, air conditioned container facilities, uh, and uh, and uh, processing uh, food processing industries. If we do like that, uh, within the rural area itself, I mean, all the rural people uh, who are already involved in the agriculture sector will be will become industrial workers. Once they become industrial workers. Uh, Their income will be doubled or tripled or even four times higher than that one because uh, agriculture uh, if, if farmers are getting an opportunity to store their products automatically they can decide the price of their products. The car companies are deciding the price of their product. Um, uh, washing machine companies are deciding the price of their product. At the same time, a milk vendor cannot decide the price of his milk. A, a farmer cannot. Cannot decide the price of his uh, paddy. A farmer cannot decide the price of wheat. So, if if we have sufficient golden facilities in the rural areas, and those things can be stored in those areas, so automatically they can be converted into processed foods, and it can be exported to foreign countries. This way, I mean, uh, uh, urban people also will get employment opportunities. Rural areas also, and people get employment opportunities, and uh, uh, and. Uh, Once this type of industries are coming up, automatically uh, the, the government can control them. Industries, I mean, uh, not to pollute the air, not to pollute the water, and even uh, they can go for environmental friendly uh, production methods, uh, whether paddy, whether I mean uh, cereal items, uh, whether banana, whatever maybe. Uh, farmers can go for environmental friendly, I mean, production uh, items. In this way, uh, the, the water pollution can be reduced. Uh, Air pollution can be, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, keep maintained. Health of our people also will be maintained. This, this is the way I would like to, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, suggest with respect to, I mean, environmental issues. As I told that, uh, both our environment and the development are uh, opposite directions as far as the development is concerned. If we keep on developing, China also, China river also, China's industrial sector also polluted major rivers in in China. But uh, uh, no World Bank, no uh, no, no environmentalist, uh, nobody went there to protest against the Chinese government. Why you are polluting the water? Why you are polluting the air? Why you are polluting the canal? Why you are polluting? I'm I'm not suggesting that we have to pollute the water. We have to pollute the air, something like that. But at the same time, why environmentalists are very much concerned about only India? That is what I'm asking. Why they are not going to uh, South of uh, uh, South, uh, South Korea uh, to protest against uh, the pollution uh, done by them? Why they did not go to I mean uh, Taiwan to to stop the pollution? Why they did not go to Japan to stop the pollution? Why they did not go to I mean uh, uh, Singapore to uh, uh, to protect the Coastal Act uh, co co implement the Coastal Act? Why everybody is concerned about only about India? India cannot take care of entire world. Uh, and uh, so, what I would like to suggest is that government has to come forward with uh, uh, relaxing our rules and regulations with respect to. We have to protect the forest, no doubt about that one. We have to protect our animals. We have to protect our birds. Uh, I mean, we have to protect our coastal areas. And I mean, uh, definitely, I mean, I am support that one. But at the same time, uh, we have to protect the human beings also. If, if 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 how long we can keep the poverty people below the poverty line? I mean, already. I mean, uh, uh, Professor. I mean, Rangarajan Committee 2014 has uh, clearly stated that uh, nearly 400 million people in India are not having sufficient food in India. So, one side we don't have sufficient food in India. Another side, what we are, we are talking about protecting environment, protecting the ecosystem, uh, protecting the I mean uh, ecological system. We have to protect the human beings. Uh, we have to protect the forest. We have to protect the environment. And just equally, we have to protect the human beings also. Uh, their life their sustainability their lifestyle also very very important and uh, uh, for this i mean uh, what i would like to suggest is that uh, and uh, the same earmark 5% of the forest land for i mean industrialization purpose introduce i mean uh, uh, world class infrastructure development what are the protests coming from uh, people you just ignore ignore our our development is very much important for us 
uh, if, if people are protesting, it gives them job opportunities within the National Highway Authority. If farmers are protesting, uh, just uh, 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 who, who are the farmers who are losing the land, it just gives them job in the National Highway, uh, I mean, itself, National Highway Authority itself. There are, if, if world if world class infrastructure uh, facilities are created, that will create millions of employment opportunities. The farmers who are losing the land, the people who are losing their houses, I mean, the, the people who are losing their la land, I mean, uh, any other uh, land, I mean, uh, uh, for, for national highways, uh, should be, uh, their children should be incorporated in the emblem of the opportunities which are supposed to be created by, I mean, the, this in the, by, by the world class uh, infrastructure authorities. Uh, no, nobody should, I mean, uh, should be thrown out of the, I mean, uh, 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 development aspects. A bit simple example I can tell you. Uh, in in Kerala, uh, Cochin Airport when when Cochin Airport was uh, set up, it it was set up only the paddy field in in, in near I mean Ernakulam, uh, Cochin Airport came not in the parallel land, it was pakka three times paddy was cultivated in that area in in Cochin Airport it was cultivated in a paddy land three times people used to cultivate paddy in that area in that land only I mean Kerala government developed I mean airport. And now you see that, but what that uh, uh, the airport authority did, uh, whoever uh, uh, handed over the land to the airport, I mean, uh, uh, for development purpose, they were given a job opportunities within the airport. Because a lot of people lost their homes, a lot of people lost their, I mean, uh, livelihood, I mean, uh, their livelihood to land. So the the, the Cochin Port, the Cochin Nadmasri Airport Authority decided that whoever lost their land for airport will be accommodated, will be I mean incorporated in the uh, in the emblem of the market of the I mean uh, airport uh, uh, development. So uh, those who lost their land now they are working the airport. I mean uh, 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 that that's the best system. I mean uh, government of India can I mean adopt. Uh, if the farmers are losing their land uh, and uh, let them uh, let the government provide them an employment opportunity so that uh, their lifestyle will be uh, their livelihood will be protected and uh, the scheme will be implemented successfully without any hurdles from the farmer side so this way uh, i would like to suggest uh, certain schemes for this one as i already told that uh, uh, though there are inverse relationship between um, environmental uh, and, uh, I mean management and uh, I mean uh, uh, world class infrastructure development and development of a country, but after a certain stage, after a certain stage, they can go together. I mean, uh, once people become I mean uh, educated, once people become I mean emblem uh, got an emblem the opportunities, automatically they will they will they see that uh, they they will come forward to protect the environment. I mean, uh, so in the, in the in the only the initial stages of development, uh, people ignore the environmental issues. Uh, people will pollute the people may pollute the water, uh, people may pollute the air, uh, people may pollute the, I mean land something like that. But after a certain stage, uh, one, one stage will come. Once people become I mean educated, once people become uh, employed, once people become uh, up, upper the middle class level, automatically people will voluntarily come forward and they will put up the uh, land they will put up the water they will they will not simply will not pollute the air they will not simply pollute the uh, water they simply pollute, pollute the soil water mean so to that level for that we need development we need development only through development we can reduce the pollution in the future otherwise the developing stage definitely we will pollute we will pollute the water we will pollute the air we will pollute everything that is the reason uh, delhi is i mean the capital of i mean polluted i mean capitals in the world and that is going on in, 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 in at present in India. So, to in future for the sustainability of environment as well as for the sustainability of the ecosystem, we have to see the sustainability of the livelihood of the people. For that, we have to go for all these type of development. Development without the development, we cannot you cannot avoid I mean river pollution, you cannot avoid water pollution, you cannot avoid solid pollution. Uh, with this, I am I just I want to conclude my talk. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm very much thankful to uh, uh, Sandhi Madam and uh, Sobana Madam and uh, uh, our, uh, for having given me this very good opportunity and, uh, uh, and uh, all the, uh, the all the deans I think uh, joined uh, uh, academy dean uh, de, uh, deanery of academics I mean I am very much thankful to the entire team I mean who involved in this uh, excellent program uh, I am I'm, uh, I'm very happy to listen some of the talks I mean delivered by. Uh, environmentalists really i appreciate i mean their concern for uh, 
uh, India. But at the same time, uh, development is very essential. Uh, uh, development should go along with, the, I mean, uh, uh, concern of the, I mean, uh, uh, should go along with the normal management. Uh, without, I mean, uh, uh, we cannot, in, uh, we, we cannot, I mean, ignore the development and the protection of the environment alone will not solve our economic and the basic problems. With this, I would like to conclude the talk. Uh, once again, I am very thankful to the management of uh, Mr. Peter College for having given me this very good opportunity. You are totally free to discuss with me and uh, we can have a discussion. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. It's been really highly edifying. A statistics involved speech on natural resources and economic development. Indeed, it's high time to realize and recognize that Indian resources and infrastructure is self-sufficient and we are out to be satisfied with what we have. We thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One or two questions can be taken. It's time for question and answer session. Good evening. First of all, I thank Dr. Arunachalam for his valuable and informative lecture on natural resources and economic development. Now the forum is open for interaction. I request the participants to raise questions and to clarify their doubts. You can post the questions in the chat box or you can unmute and ask. Sir, uh, in your lecture, you have quoted uh, the example of China. And uh, you have stated that China is so developed and uh, it is highly developed in its infrastructural facilities. But as far as I am concerned, infrastructural development will definitely lead to the destruction of natural resources. Now, without natural resources, mankind or human beings, they will find it very difficult to have livelihood and there will be the problem of food security. This will be a major issue. I need your answer for this question. You have the answer with you. I mean, China became advanced country. Still, I mean, China is number one in the food grains production, in the flower production, in the vegetable production. And it is the 65 percent of the world market is, I mean, now, I mean, occupied by Chinese uh, industries only. Even we are importing noodles from China. We are importing uh, chili sauce from China. We are importing uh, tomato sausage from China. Most of the European countries, I mean, importing, I mean, pork, beef, the sausages from China. So, uh, in the China became industrialized. And also, they became world, I mean, world uh, top level exporter. And uh, environment is not affected in China. So the problem is uh, yes. there is uh, scarcity as far as Indian economy is concerned. There is uh, the problem of supply of food grains, even though we produce, but there are a lot of people who are not getting the food grains and at the same time, they suffer out of hunger. So no. if you're going to again and again concentrate on the development of infrastructural facilities, definitely I personally feel that there will be the problem of food security in future. No, India will not face any uh, food uh, security problem because I mean uh, we have enough land under I mean uh, I mean under food grains uh, production. Uh, we have we have enough I mean uh, rivers. We have enough I mean uh, storage facilities. The thing is that scientifically, we are not able to manage them. We are wasting 30% of our food grains are simply wasted. I mean, if, if, we, if we have storage facilities, or definitely we will be having, we, even the government of India has only, uh, we are producing around 300 million uh, tons of food grains, but our storage capacity is only 100 million. 
I mean, 100 million, uh, I mean, footprints only, we can store it in India. Our storage capacity is only one third. Uh, at the same time, one third of what we are producing in India simply wasted due to lack of go down facilities. So, the production is not the problem in India. Storage is the problem, processing is the problem, and the marketing is the problem. That is the reason, uh, I mean, people, farmers are, I mean, always in a poor condition. And if, if, if farmers are, I mean, uh, well equipped with this type of processing, uh, other things, definitely we can supply more uh, agricultural production to the market and we can enjoy the life. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you. And the next question is with regard to the bullet trains. Yes. You said that uh, Indian economy should have bullet trains, which should connect north, south, east and west. But how many can travel in that? It can be used only for trading purposes, but at the same time, uh, with a huge population, how many can travel in that? And the construction of bullet trains, the cost will be very high. When you take into account the cost benefit analysis, it will not be very much fruitful. No, as I told that in 1950s, India had no middle class population. In our, at the time of independence, India had around 340 million population in India. But uh, middle class population was very much limited. But now we have around 350 million middle class population. And uh, shortly we are going to I mean, uh, have I mean, double the uh, middle class population in India. And uh, once this type of world class infrastructural facilities are created, automatically they will create employment opportunities. Employment opportunities for the younger generations. Yes, and uh, once, once they become, uh, once employment opportunities are created for engineers, uh, they will become middle class population. Automatically, they will have the purchasing power to travel anywhere. And uh, that may not be the problem. And another question, I mean, as you said, where we have money? And one more point I will share with you, madam. Recently, there is a report I have read in Dubai. I mean, uh, India number one. In Indians are the number one in purchasing buildings, lands in Dubai. Recently, I mean, just three, four days back only I read the report. India, Indians are the number one uh, rank, uh, rank in purchasing land in Dubai. You just imagine who are these uh, number one people? Whether, whether you can buy a flat in Dubai uh, by giving, I mean, five crores or ten crores, whether I can buy a land, I mean, a land, five cents of land in Dubai, even in, in, in India itself, uh, I mean, maximum what we can do, maximum we can buy a five cents of land, construct a house and educate our children. And uh, we, that much only we can do. But other uh, than Oxfam on international, I mean, uh, tra I mean, uh, uh, I mean, abolition agency has stated that uh, seventy-two percent of our wealth is taken over by or garnered by one percent of our India's population. Only just one percent of our India's population. Just imagine that. Uh, how long we can allow? I mean, this this will go on like that. Uh, thing is that uh, if uh, India is not industrialized, uh, the same people will uh, will will keep on. I mean, uh, cornering same percentage of money themselves uh, and buy the entire Dubai. And, uh, uh, and uh, already the press, before the present government com coming to power, uh, I'm telling that the PJP government before coming to power, even our Prime Minister once stated that uh, after coming to power, nearly 20 lakh crores of money, 20, around, I'm telling that around 20 lakh crores of money been kept in, uh, in a Swiss bank. Uh, after I coming to power, I'll bring the money and uh, invest in infrastructure. That's what I uh, promised. By after he became uh, prime minister, when he inquired in the Swiss bank, the Swiss bank tell that we don't have any accounts. You just imagine that. What happened? Our intellectual, I mean, uh, our patriotic, our uh, industrialists, film stars, uh, politicians, uh, they took the money and invested in, in uh, diverted their investment in other areas. So what I would like to suggest is that if we keep on, uh, if they keep the country like this at this present level. And uh, this type of politicians, uh, I mean, industrialists, uh, I mean, film stars, uh, they exploit our uh, exploit we people, and they take the money to this type of foreign countries. At least now, uh, uh, Dubai became, I mean, top world top class tourist destination. So they are going there, and uh, uh, result is that how long we can see, keep the poverty people uh, at, at this poverty level? We need development. People should feel proud of. I want to feel that I have a bullet train in my country. I want to feel that I can travel to Delhi within, I mean, 10 hours, 15 hours. I should feel, my children should feel, my grandchildren should feel that 
I, I, this is my country. Is my country not always fighting with the Pakistan or fighting with the China or something like that? I used to feel that with, with, with my infrastructure facility, I should feel that, I mean, my people are uh, highly advanced to industrialized. Uh, even with the 10th standard, my, my grandchildren should get a job. With the plus two degree, they should get a job. They should be in a position to get a job for, I mean, 20,000 rupees, 25,000 rupees. But even after engineering graduates are working for MNRGP work. In, do you know that one? Engineering graduates working for MNRGP work. One lecturer with the PhD degree is climbing palm tree. I mean, uh, how long, how long we can keep? India needs 1,500 universities in India. But at present, we are having only 1,000 universities. The government is supposed to spend, I mean, 3%, 4% for higher education, but spending less than 1%. Uh, even so many, I mean, uh, national education policies recommended 6% of money for education development, but is spending only 3.5%, uh, around that percent. So uh, if, if, we, if we earn more foreign exchange, if, if we industrialize our country, we can create more emblem opportunities, we can generate more GST, and we can export more, and we can have more foreign exchange reserve. That money can be reutilized for, uh, I mean, make our country, I mean, uh, again, flourishing to the next level of, I mean, uh, statement. I mean, for that, I mean, uh, without, I mean, uh, at present level, we cannot. Uh, India alone cannot, I mean, uh, I mean, take care of the entire world economic environment system. I mean, how, how many forest area Dubai has? How many acres of land in Gulf countries they have forest? Suppose if, if somebody, uh, maybe, you know, may be here. And if we keep, if, if, if we want to keep the forest like this level, how many acres, how many percentage of forest area Gulf countries have? How many, acre, how many percentage of forest land, uh, I mean, I mean, Iran has, or I mean, Iraq has in, in the forest cover? How many, how many percentage of land, um, this, I mean, uh, uh, some of the Western uh, Asian countries they have. Uh, at least, as far as forest is concerned, we can create social forestry. Wherever waste land is there, suppose we take 5% of land for industrialization purposes, wherever we have waste land on the river side, on the lake side, on the garden, or on the, I mean, in university level, college, within the colleges, we can create social forestries. We can create social forestries equivalent to that of the land which is, I mean, supposed to be taken over by the uh, I mean, government for industrialization purposes. So, Mr. just want to extend what you have been uh, saying all this time in just yes, a sentence yes. and get it done. Uh, just to draw the curtains on your uh, wonderful uh, comprehensive talk on how uh, this capitalist economy <clears throat> has led to the rich become richer and the poor become poorer is what you were driving at all the time. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, much depends on, from, from your talk, I'm drawing a conclusion, much depends on uh, the politicians and the policy makers. Am I right? Yes. The politicians and the policy makers and uh, the righteous way in which they can, the same way in which they can function, not just in words and in their uh, election uh, promises but in their action <clears throat> and uh, that will begin with as Dr. Thelma was uh, asking you, that will begin with the work, uh, reformative work to begin at the base of the pyramid and then of course uh, those who are at the base of the pyramid, the uh, below poverty line uh, subjects and the average earners as you dreamed <clears throat> just now uh, we'll move oh, it, is, it, is, it is a dream of we, we, everybody. <laughs> all of us. All of us. Uh, they will move up to the top. And as you said, that will that, that, make them travel in the bullet trains. And so much depends on the policy makers, the politicians, and the sanity they entertain. Uh, yeah, things are changing a little bit. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, on uh, industrial uh, development, sir, mm. uh, mainly uh, India is filled with public sector units and uh, they derive their capital from their uh, from the capital markets. Uh, in 2020, markets uh, hit the lower circuit and uh, it almost dragged to 23,000 the sensex. And now, uh, at present, it is reaching all time highs uh, uh, every week. So, I 
personally feel that uh, like uh, the public center units are using the market for just speculative purposes rather than investing the money that uh, investors give them for uh, their capital what's your view on, on that sir oh, our, our, current, our current position the government uh, i mean make uh, make use that you uh, make use of that money for i mean their personal purpose in our see one point you have to keep in your mind our is open the economy our is open the economy 1991 itself we opened our economy for foreign direct investment foreign technology foreign know how uh, anybody can come to india and invest in india just imagine that how many foreigners came and invested in in colleges and universities is it isn't it how, how many industrialists came to india to invest in tripur company even i i read so I, i i heard that some of the programs not even 2% of the tripur panin companies i mean having foreign direct investment not even 2% if, um, one can say that no not only in the tripur even the gujarat i mean diamond i mean processing industry units also not even a single percent of foreigners came and invested in these sectors because we did not allow our politicians our corrupt politicians uh, mayors uh, ward members uh, uh, all these people did not allow they are not allowing the foreigners to come and invest in those areas and uh, uh, the, that type of practice should be removed once uh, everywhere industries are there automatically people will forget about the public sector undertakings and um, uh, even china all the uh, industry units are private companies only i am telling that even china the special economic zones are uh, private uh, companies only not i mean chinese government companies and but they are doing excellently that th- those companies only uh, taking chinese products to all over the world I, our market also if you go to our hyper market in chennai or even any of the uh, major cities in india you can see 65 percent of their uh, products are market products are for coming from china only and even the mobile sector also i am telling telling that in 1950s condition i am telling that uh, at least china i mean established certain products i mean top level the korea established a small country korea established and uh, uh, we are getting things from i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, japan but we are not able to establish a brand name for even for a mobile set just this mobile i mean, suppose I, if I, if I, I, i we are telling so many things suppose still i am buying a foreign mobile only my children are intended to buy a foreign mobile only we are not able to i mean manufacture a set which is i mean manufactured within india but at the same time if you ask americans most of our i mean mobile companies are, are only indians are working why we are not able to create emblemed operations for these indians within india so that we can have our own name bharat mobiles or something like that or any mobile i mean i am telling that why we are not able to do that one we are constantly only on public sector companies but one said completely opened our our economy is completely opened economy but still why there are restrictions why our ease of doing business index is still 63 why our corruption index is still uh, 66 those things i mean should be addressed mudraja sir thank you so much sir yeah now it is time for an effective feedback i request dr kiran moy chetia assistant professor from chandrakamal besbaru commerce college from assam we request you to be short and crisp yes good evening yeah uh, the uh, the host is not allowing uh, am i audible yes sir yes sir okay uh, good evening congratulations to the entire family of bishop heber college for the successful completion of the international conference respected principal dr paul dayabaran chief patron bishop dr chandrasekharan vice principal dr moses Dean of Arts, Dr. S. Sobana, Organizing Secretary K. Santhi, esteemed dignitaries, faculties, and fellow participants. It's a privilege for me to be a part of such an enriching and illuminating conference. All the five special addresses of the conference were multidimensional and very informative. We are grateful to Dr. Andrew Speedy. Dr. Nirmal Selvamoni, 
Dr. Ori Golder Luz, Dr. Theodore Baskaran, and Dr. P. Arunachalam for the valuable insights given on the occasion. Each session, starting from the prayer followed by the introduction, felicitation, and question answer session to the vote of thanks was very systematically arranged. The technical staff dealing with the conference have made everything or handled everything very efficiently. The time management was very praiseworthy. Everything started on time and finished on time. And the technical session seems to be very systematically arranged. The technical session which I attended was the session two of the English studies. The chairperson, Dr. Sri Dhanabad, was very interpretative, insightful, and encouraging. The coordinator, Mrs. Deborah, offic uh, efficiently handled the session. So once again, like thank you for this opportunity. And uh, uh, the special mention should be made to Sir Edwin Moses for his communication, uh, the effective communication regarding the conference matters. So once again, congratulations and thank you for giving us a trajectory to the environmental humanities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Next, I request Ms. Shubhi Bisaria, MA student from MIT Institute of Behavioral and Allied Sciences, Lucknow, to share your feedback. Okay, any other participants, if you want to share your feedback, you're welcome to do so. Okay, so we are moving on. Gratitude makes sense of your past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. It's not happiness that brings us gratitude, it's gratitude that brings us happiness. As we sign off at this happy note, I now request Dr. K. Shanti, Associate Dean of Arts, to propose the word of thanks. Thank you, uh, Dr. Glenny, respected chief guest and the resource person of the valedictory session, Dr. P. Arunachalam, head department of economics, Cochin University, Cochin, Kerala, revered chairman of the college and bishop of Trichy Tanjur Diocese, right reverend Dr. Chandrasekharan, respected principal of this esteemed institution, Dr. Paul Dayabarin, respected vice principal of the aided section, Professor Alagapa Moses, and the vice principal of the SF section, Dr. Samuel Christopher, respected Barzar of the college, Jain Dr. respected deans of the deanery of academics, Dr. Shobana and Dr. Violet Dayabaran, respected conveners of this conference and heads of the committee, respected co-conveners, guests, participants, from various places and my dear fellow student friends of this two-day international virtual conference on environmental humanities, good evening to one and all gathered here. As the two-day conference has come to the fruition, I recall the lifeline of a college, Nisi Dominus Frustra. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. I thank God for his grace upon every one of us that has kept us going and safe during the tough times of the epidemic and has enabled us to undertake this intellectual exercise to rethink on our commitment towards defending our only living planet Earth. First, I thank God for his mercies. All are one in Lord Jesus Christ, for he shows no impartiality. Even as one star differs from another star in its glory, Yet it is the same God and the same Spirit who is the creator of all. 
every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change our universe the earth the air that we breathe the sunshine the rain the biomes and all life and non life forms that we see here are all gift from above and have their own intrinsic worth they all have their legitimate right to ex exist and cohabit with us at the end of this conference we take home the most valuable lessons learned to live and let live we are challenged to look beyond our limited anthropocentric view of life that stifle the quality of our life i quote the words of david suzuki as we part from here a canadian environmental activist the way we see the world shapes the way we treat it if a mountain is a deity not a pile of ore if a river is one of the veins of the land not potential irrigation water if a forest is a sacred grove not timber if other species are biological kin not resources or if the planet is a mother earth not an opportunity then we will treat each other with great respect this is the challenge to look at the world from a different perspective i would like to thank all the distinguished speakers from different fields of expertise who joined us on the virtual mode from different parts of the world and shared their precious knowledge with all of us i personally like how dr andrew williams speedy highlighted the drastic change of rising industrialization on the environment and all the possible solutions that can be implemented and the way he explicated the cowboy economy spaceship economy donut economy modern economy and green economy were marvelous dr nirma salvamani's recommendations on revamping the education system and thinking along the lines of tenai was very remarkable dr oren gentelus imperatives on the need for pragmatic shift of looking at the new realism of connecting the stewardship environmental thinking to life was really intelligent dr theodor bashkarin's a uh, wide personal practical observations on language and ecology made a fresh impact on the minds of all of us dr arunachalam's balanced perspective on natural resources and economy were really intellectual and challenging i'm thankful to all of them for having accepted our invitations and for being with us all through uh, our planning um through whole of uh, all the communications which we were uh, forwarding them and for their graceful replies to be with us uh, these two days i owe my deep sense of gratitude to our revered bishop and chairman of the college right reverend dr d chandrashekaran for his blessings in setting the ball spin on its axis with this introductory remarks i am deeply indebted to our respected principal dr paul dayabarin for the encouragement and support he provided from the inception of the idea to host the conference on the scale first of its kind in bishop eber bringing all humanities disciplines together under one canopy I owe my thanks to our respected vice principal professor Argappa Moses who is also the convener of this conference for all his good wishes and encouragement he provided I am grateful to respected Dr Nyanaraj Bursar and co-convener of this conference for he has always been a pillar of a support in all our endeavors not only in sanctioning approving and passing our bills but also in providing us the needed encouragement I thank respected Dr. Violet Dayabarin, Dean of Sciences and convener of this conference, for always being there for us and providing all her support, wishes, and prayers. My deep sense of gratitude to respected Dr. S. Shobana, Dean of Arts and the convener of the conference. I'm overwhelmed by the generous gestures and the ease with which she relates and helped me. in a great deal in making every aspect of this international conference go so wonderfully well she has always been 
a friend, philosopher, and guide, and a person with whom I could relate with much ease. On behalf of all of you and the organizing committee, I would like to sincerely thank her for her optimistic demeanor, despite the tremendous demands in organizing the seminar of this magnitude during the pandemic season. If at the end of the two days, we are able to relish the fruits of success of this conference, it is absolutely because of our tireless efforts to make every aspect of this conference significant. I appreciate her vital perceptions and dynamic involvement in making this international conference a grand success. I owe my gratitude to all the co-conveners of this conference for their tremendous support at every stage of planning of the conference. They were so gracious to extend their support by being with us in the planning meetings, deputing their best faculty members to be a part of the organizing committee. I thank Dr. Relton, Head Department of Social Work, Dr. Gnanaraj, Head Department of Commerce, Dr. Suresh Frederick, Dean of R&D and UG Head of English, Dr. Michael David Prem Kumar, Associate Dean of International Relations and Head Management of Management Studies, and Dr. Femela, Head of History, Dr. Sita Lakshmi, Head of the Department of Economics. I profusely thank the chairpersons of the technical sessions for sparing their valuable time. Professor Argapa Moses, Head of Environmental Science, Dr. Relton, Head of Social Work, Dr. Fenella, and Dr. Shanti Merlin of Commerce, Dr. Suresh Frederick, UG Head of English, Dr. C. Danapal, Dean of Training and Placement and Associate Professor of English, Dr. G. Parvati, Dr. Sheba Princess, Dr. Esther Roslin, Dr. Melvin uh, from the Department of English, Dr. Michael David Prem Kumar from Management Studies, Dr. Vinod Isaac Peter from the Department of Tamil, Dr. Sita Lakshmi from Economics, and Fem Femila from History. I place on record the help rendered by the other members of the organizing committee by way of coordinating and facilitating all the parallel paper sessions. I place on record the following members, Dr. C. Ravi Chandran, Associate Professor, Dr. A. Daisy Carolyn Mary, Assistant Professor of Environmental Studies, Dr. Thelma and Dr. Ranjit Kumar of the Department of Economics, Dr. Esther Roslin, Dr. Jabba Isaac Samuel, Professor Edwin Moses, Ms. Deborah of Department of English, and Dr. Devi of English, Dr. T. Samraj and Dr. A. Manuniti of Department of History, Dr. Glennie Jocelyn and Dr. Soundarya of Management Studies, Dr. B. Arun Kumar and Dr. Florence Shalini of Social Work, and Dr. Siva Selvan and Dr. Munish Murthy of Department of Tamil. I've flown for words and I'm indeed floored by the way my dear friends from my own department were with me all along. My big thanks and appreciation to my dedicated friends from my department, Dr. Jabba Isaac Sam, for the te sound technical knowledge he provided as we planned to go virtual. I'm immensely grateful to Professor Edwin Moses for being there all the time, uh, even burning out his midnight oil and uh, planning everything so meticulously and perfectly. I thank the help rendered by Ms. Deborah in trying to organize all the paper reading sessions along with Edwin Moses in, and on all the pre-conference arrangements. I have always banked on their support, which they have lavished on me generously, and I have always enjoyed their ready help in very many ways. I have to confess that I have bothered them irrespective of time seeking their expert opinions. They had always been very kind and helpful and sincere to the core. I feel it a blessing to have such wonderful people in my team who proved to be the shining stars in my darkest nights. Thank you, Sam. Professor Edwin and Ms. Deborah. I thank all the members of the organizing committee for their contributions in the conduct of the conference, particularly the reviewer of the sessions, Dr. Florence Shalini, Assistant Professor of Social Work, 
she was there throughout with her optimistic yes always and uh, i thank the masters of ceremonies dr uh, shalini again dr glenny and dr debora for their excellent comparing and the great sense of timing with which they did with much ease i thank dear participants for your valuable knowledge contributions and the student friends who were part of the today national conference international conference for your focused presence i place my special thanks to ms kavya of first ma english aided for her voluntary endeavor in bringing out a beautiful promotional video for this conference i thank the help rendered by the it support team particularly mr abel mr babu mr vinod and mr jose for being there throughout in the planning and in the execution of the conference i thank mr charles the electrician and the press people for giving their helping hand in the publicity of the conference i thank the photographer from iqac mr raghavan and the other photographer i thank mr suresh mr murugesh and mr raja our support staff for all the help they rendered i thank mrs vimala our typist for the best help she provided in all possible ways i quote from 12th night where it says i can no other answer make but thanks and thanks thank you everyone for your focused presence on these two days keep in mind that the earth groans moans and speaks to us in many ways to let us know its pains let us strive to save our only living planet the earth this will be our take home lesson thank you one and all jai hind thank you ma'am an instruction to the participants the feedback link is posted in the chat box please fill it up a note to the participants certificates will be posted to your registered email id after checking your attendance in the conference and your participation in the paper presentation session probably within 10 working days an intimation will be made regarding publication after the selection of your paper with respect to content and plagiarism check thank you as we wrap up the conference today let us all raise up for the national anthem जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंज हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नाम जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे the end of one chapter is just the beginning of another the best is always yet to come thank you everyone for joining us in this valediction see you all in the next international interdisciplinary conference 2022 thank you thank you madam thank you all